Jace Bands from the Mysterious Monkeys, a Callista, and a Bacan from Shalkin Little Fear. I feel like we're probably not going to get the blind pick Camille that comes out of this draft. Now, Shalk, of course, in the last game drafted heavily towards AD, but it didn't matter because the, the Jax got so far ahead and there was no true heavy amount of armor on the side of Mysterious Monkeys to kind of counter that. And there's still so many options as well. You've got actually a Lucian ban from the Mysterious Monkeys, so perhaps we'll even see, I mean, I expect a Zack ban from Shalk and Fear, but with Janna left on the cards, with the least there as well, there's so many different options. Alistair is likely to be the one if we look at the last game, uh, but the Tom Kench is still up that was banned in the last game as well, so it could be an adjustment to the Zack, as you mentioned, the Elise, or even the Gragas could be another ban here. Yeah? It's gonna be the Alistair, so Mysterious Monkeys have first choice. Zack available, Elise available, Tristana available, and Jarvan available, they will go for the Jarvan themselves, something we saw Schalke and Fear do when they had that opportunity. Now will it be Elise Tristana coming out here from Schalke? We know they like to play the Tristana the Braum together, but there are other options that we've seen them go. We've seen the Varus in this series to take control of the bottom lane. We've seen the Zaya out of the teams to, to kind of play for the later game as well. Zach was left open last game as well and wasn't picked up by anyone. So there's a there's a a debate as to where you go with your jungle. The Thresh will be locked in. That's a, a support that we've seen such high priority on across most of the tournaments in the known world, most of the professional tournaments in the known, known world. world. Uh, what about in the unknown world? Hey, you never know, Atlantis might have a tournament. That's I could just true. imagine them underwater getting annoyed at the, the fact that computers keep fusing because of all the leaks and stuff that happens. Maybe they even have water-resistant computers. I was going to say, they probably like would have invented new, those. New phones that if exist, we're in Atlantis, there's probably magic involved. The Thresh, the Tristana, I know you want to talk about the bottom lanes because we've had both locked in already, Medic. Uh, the Zaya, four Mysterious Monkeys alongside the Braum. So a good amount of crowd control, scaling for the later game, less so for the laning phase. So would expect Schalke to take control. Once again, when the Thresh is there for Schalke, they're like, okay, we'll combo the Thresh, the Elise, another game where we're going to see this pick focus out of the jungle and support. And Schalke now, because they picked the Elise last, they have the opportunity to get rid of things like the Zac if they really worry that Mysterious Monkeys are going to take kickers up towards the top lane on that Jarvan. Could be a jungle Jarvan, the flex opportunity is there. Renekton banned from Schalke, very strong champion for both Kikis and Smitty J. And incredibly important in trying to get a top lane that you can win. Because that is where all of these games really have been decided, in that top portion of the map. Again, the LeBlanc ban comes out. I would almost hesitate to see Kikis on the job, and he has played it a bunch. I think it is still a good pick. I think, though, the matchups um, are slightly less in Kikis' favor. If we end up seeing the likes of a Nar come out here from Schalke, I wouldn't be too surprised to see Mysterious Monkeys ban it away. But the Shen is gone too, which does highlight that Mysterious, uh, the Schalke think Mysterious Monkeys are going to the jungle with this. Still Gragas on the cards here, so Amazing yep. could take that into the jungle as well. There's so many different opportunities when you have a flex pick like this. The Corky removed by the Mysterious Monkey, so they've actually gone down almost exactly the same ban path as they did in the last game, just switching out the Tom Kench for that Lucian. Now, Shalker either go Nah here or Syndra, and if you go Syndra, it allows Mysterious Monkeys to take an advantageous mid lane matchup. We know Cassiopeia is one that we've seen. Talia is one we've seen out of Cos Q as well. His Talia was actually impressive in game two as well. That means if Nar comes out here, we're basically back to game two set up for Mysterious Monkeys, which worked very well for them. But then Schalke get the opportunity to pick into the Nar, a matchup that they feel like does better. We might see the Rumble come out, which does lose the side lane later, but has presence in team fighting, but already a decent amount of magic damage coming through. There's just so many different Ooh. options, Stress, and it's going to be Sejuani. So it is Jarvan in the top lane, Sejuani in the jungle. Amazing. Had a great game on Sejuani in match one of this series. Schalke looking up towards the top lane as their final pick. What do you take into Jarvan? Is the Nar? I think the Nar is fine. Um, Jarvan still can have some presence in that lane, and of course, will be able to come out of the lane. We might see a Camille, another matchup that we do see. Jax. Oh, it's Jax. Okay, so Jax, a, a pick we started to see rise in prominence in the LPL, LCK, a little bit in Europe as well, into the Jarvan. Jarvan has kind of predictable trading patterns. We know that Smitty J is a great Jax player as well. Handily took out Kikis in the last game when Kikis was playing the Camille. 
I wonder whether this is another matchup that Mysterious Monkeys will be kind of regretting taking. Now, what do Mysterious Monkeys have to offset that? They have a lot of engage with the Javan, with the Sijuani, with the Talia. That's great for Mysterious Monkeys. But on the other side, Schalke, good pick potential again on the four-player setup. Elise, Syndra, Thresh, great at hooking individual members and then punishing them as the Jax is pushing on the other side of the map. Have to see if that top lane focus remains for Schalke and Ulfir and the Mysterious Monkeys. We talked up every other lane as well. Mid lane, something we need to dive into as we get into this game because last time we saw Kadrill pushing in Koskyu, whereas Koskyu is on the receiving end. Talia this time will give him a little bit more strength in that 1v1 matchup. Schalke and Ulfir, just a single win away from taking the first series in the promotion tournament half of the job will be done for them and they will face up against the winner of Giants and NIP next week. If you think you know who is going to win the game, make sure you jump on Twitter. Hashtag S04win for Schalke to take it 3-1. and one. Or hashtag MMWin if you think the Mysterious Monkeys will bounce back and take us all the way to game five. We're going to jump onto the Summoner's Rift, perhaps the final game of the day. Schalke and Beer against the Mysterious Monkeys. In a great situation for Schalke, they now know, as you said, one game away from being in that winner's bracket final. Double elimination format would mean they would then have two more chances if things were to go awry. But Schalke have looked really strong in aspects of the game. Game one, very back and forth. And we can see Schalke have gone back towards this play style around Smitty J over the last now three games we anticipate. I want to see whether Schalke can continue the momentum from the last game or whether MM can kind of put a roadblock in the way and take us to that game five. Mysterious Monkeys have developed as a team across the course of the split. We see different members stepping up each game, but across this series in particular, it is, we've seen a lot of pressure on Amazing and on Kickers' shoulders. They have been the members where the focus has been for Schalke, where Mysterious Monkeys have had to try and find the answers, and it it seemed when Mysterious Monkeys were able to relieve some of that pressure, when Koskyu is able to step up, when Yuki is able to step up on this Talia and on this Zaya, that has been where Mysterious Monkeys have looked the strongest. So yeah, well, I want to see them move that pressure away. Exactly. When when it's not just been about Kickers and Amazing, which Kickers and Amazing, they think themselves the top two versus two. When uh, you, you look at it, they say, okay, not many people will be able to beat us two versus two. Problem is, this game is not a two versus two in the top lane at all times. Smitty J has weathered a lot of that presence in the top lane and turned games back around on his own. And that means that Kickers hasn't been able to live up to that. Now, if Amazing can somehow help out Kickers even more than normal, we may see him end up being able to fight in this matchup, but still, Jarvan into Jax, tough matchup as this game goes later, especially. Let's, let's explore the other matchups as well, Stress. Uh, let's go to mid lane. Cosq with this Talia into the, the Syndra of Kadro. Talia, very good at pushing up the lane, but Kadro on Syndra will be able to react to that relatively well as well, perhaps not as quite as strong in answering the push. Not quite as strong, and of course there were those adjustments that you mentioned on 716 to both champions. It feels like they're dragging us up to the top lane every single time here. Um, Just because the camera's there, so I, yeah, I know, doesn't mean we have to talk about it. Let's but explore the rest of something. I agree, I agree, and for once, that's still going to be the case that we have to talk about top lane medic. I, I know you don't want to talk about it, but with Amazing Visiting, this is what Mysterious Monkeys do again and again. And Amazing is trying to find a way into the lane. He's very patiently waiting. And Memento is likely to start pathing towards the top side soon as well. So junglers should meet. There's a change in jungle path as well for Memento. And I've, I've joined you on the top lane. I know, train stress. because Amazing's about to go in here. You've got to commit to this. Smitty J's going to get jumped on, but he can Ooh. try and leap away. Amazing stops him in his tracks. The counter strike comes out and does get the stun. The flash under by Smitty J, and he will get away. Kick is not quite reacting to the Counter-Strike properly. Memento has now got his red and is going to look to come up towards this top side to try and save Smitty J. Q Flash is available for Amazing, but they would have to have the damage as a follow-up, and Memento can lock somebody down at the tower. 
Play comes back, trading the bottom lane. Concussive blows will land as well. Upset tries to put the explosive charge onto Yuki. He gets a bit of damage back in response, but this is what you can do with the Zyo and a Braum. You lock them up with the feathers, and then you get the concussive blows off as well, and it's a long CC chain for an AD carry and support duo. Koskyu taking a, an awkward trade through the minions there as Cadrill punishes him heavily. Koskyu had cleared the wave and was about to try and look uh, for the Q, the uh, empowered one, where you're not standing on worked ground on the uh, threaded volley. You get those five shots out. But Cadrill's just like, I'm just going to stun you. However, back to the top lane. Memento this time wants to gank for himself. EQ combo available. Kickers dodges the cocoon and goes aggressive. EQ combo available in response as well. Memento needs to be cautious because Ooh, the amazing's, amazing's on coming. his way and has the flash. Memento has a flash of his own. Smitty J there puts the counter strike down and forces Amazing back. At the moment, Mysterious Monkeys have the number of Schalke in this top side of the map, but on the bottom side, it seems to be in favor of Upset and Norskeren. And Amazing is visiting that top side so much because of the trading potential. We'll, we'll stick on bottom side for a second as we're talking about Nor Norskeren and Upset. Now, of course, Thresh lanes very specifically trading heavily. Amazing coming back. We have to focus yeah, on Smitty J no used his leap strike. Oh, it's amazing to jump in, but he doesn't get the stun. However, he can lock him up underneath the tower. Smitty J jumps away. Amazing not quite in range to hit the Arctic Assault. How crucial would that have been if the knockup gets through there? Hang on, Kikis and Amazing still here. The momentos here. Amazing's low. They're going to get the kill onto Kikis. First blood to Smitty and the counter strike. Oh, no. Amazing might die as well. Shulk and the with a double in the top lane. And and they say amazing at kickers. You may think you're the best in the LCS, but we're the best here today. Amazing visits topside three times, and it doesn't quite connect mechanically with the knockback from Sejuani. Pixels short on that, and because they don't end up getting the kill on Smitty J, now they might do because Kickers has TP'd into the lane. He has got flash but he missed the combo Ooh. and Smitty just jumps away. You, you've delayed his back. He delayed You're gonna his... TP into the lane anyway. Delayed his back, but he just picked up a kill. So Amazing was still stuck in the lane here, was trying to get back out. Kick is now no mana, and the trade goes down from Memento and Smitty J after the crowd control locks. Amazing ends up falling as well. Don't know whether he was blocked on the way out there, but Amazing just stuck between so many minions and champions of Schalke that Amazing can't get himself out either. He had no flash, remember, because of the botched attempt to go into the top lane and no choice but to end up falling there. And that puts Schalke in such a commanding position through that top lane. We saw how strong Smitty J could be even behind on Jax. He lost first blood yep. in the last game against a split push opponent and was able to win it out in the end. Here he's against a much more team fight orientated opponent in the Jarvan. Jarvan is not known too well for his split push pressure. Whereas Jax is known to take the trades against Jarvan. When you have Counter-Strike available, you look for the trades, try and force fights against the Jarvan because you force him to combo his way out of a situation. He cannot take those prolonged auto trades. Now, we do also need to look at the rest of the map. We finally have a moment where we can expand our horizons to other maps. We see mid lane, the push plus the CS advantage is going to cost Q for now. Cadrill hasn't had much emphasis from his jungler because everybody else has been up on the top side of the map. For Schalke, they also have a bottom lane uh, that can get an advantage here as they look to get out of the laning phase. You've got the Tristani, you've got the Thresh, you can either go top side or to the mid lane and look to get out of a laning phase, but it depends on how much time you want to give the Jax. It's all about this team dynamic from Schalke. And Schalke have looked so strong at points, but have also shown some very clear weaknesses, Vision being one of them. They seem to have shored that up this game. They've got two control wards down towards the bottom side of the river in mid lane, but they don't have any on the top side. So there is a possibility that Kickers and Amazing could look for a gank onto Kadrill, who is being forced behind a little bit by Koz Q. Now, the thing for Koz Q is he knows he's going to have less damage on the trades because he's got the Mercury treads. Now, that into the Syndra, obviously a very defensive purchase to basically say, OK, I've got magic resist now. I'm not going to get taken out. Uh, gives Koz Q the ability to roam a little bit quicker, get that passive working up along the uh, surfing the walls and get themselves into the game. Now, Mysterious Monkeys are not out of this game. Schalke have a great position, but if Koskyu gets the ultimate up into a lane, we're only eight minutes into this game, so it is still anybody's, but this Jax is looking very scary. 
And this is where we need to see the development of Mysterious Monkeys that we've talked about. We need to see that 10 weeks in the LCS has allowed them to carry from different positions. We need to see Yuki step up. We need to see CosQ step up. Because you cannot put the entire impetus on Amazing and Kickers to carry you as a team. You need to show that you have improved over the last 10 weeks and you are able to take down a team like Schalke. And I think that's the positive for Schalke's side of things is they've seen upset carry. They've seen Cadrill be able to have carry performances as well. And in this series, Smitty J is like, okay, just give me Jax, everything's fine. And I'll win the game for you. So Schalke seem to have a, a much more stable base on all aspects than Mysterious Monkeys. And that's what's making them difficult to play against. Because I, I have confidence in upset. I have confidence in Cadrill being able to carry the game through. Whereas Mysterious Monkeys, we've only seen one or two games that that has happened. So we approach the 10 minute mark. Schalke do have about a thousand gold lead. Been the gold lead at 20 minutes in the last two games, so they've been able to accelerate that ever so slightly faster than we have seen it previously. Memento is going to try and push forward, but there is vision for the Mysterious Monkeys, and they are going to collapse because Koskyu has the Weaver's Wall here. Cleanses away the Unleashed Power from Kedro, try and force him back. Amazing gets the lock up onto Memento. The stun on Kedro, he's cleanses himself, but a good seismic shot from Koskyu. Smitty J jumps in, flash away from Koskyu, and here's the kill on towards the back line. And now Schalke are having to run away. That's two kills for the Mysterious Monkeys, all off the back of Koskyu with some great plays. Very important movement out of the lane by Koskyu and the rest of the Mysterious Monkeys to be able to capitalize on Schalke being in the river. Uh, Kedro thought he was out of of that exchange, but Kikis knows he can close the distance, knows he can get the kill. So we go back to the initial play where Koskyu cleanses out, looks for further damage here, knows that Kadrol can't really escape his grasp, but amazing, it's that lockdown into the shove. Kikis has enough time to get close enough to flash ultimate into the pit and be able to pick up the kill from there. Koskyu uses what little damage he has left with that small amount of mana and is able to set up amazing for the kill. As we said, this game was not over. Mysterious Monkey's back in. That's exactly what we want to see from them. Equalize the gold. Equalize the CS in most of these lanes as well. Bot lane just seems to be an island in all of these games. We, have, we haven't seen any four-man dive spot, which is what we see all of the time in LCS. It's like, where do we want to go? Let's all go bot lane and set up a play. Both these teams satisfied that those laners can face off against each other, not lose mm. too badly. It looks like we might see a bit of a lane swap here as Upset and Norskeren are heading towards mid. Well, I was wondering about that because Cadrill pushed it out and then Upset path towards bot side still. Flash into the cocoon. That lands onto Dreams. Wasn't the target they wanted. Upset jumps in. Dreams with the flash away. Moscow doesn't land the hook and Amazing now joins the fight, which forces Schalke back. They do get the flash out from Dreams. Now we have to see Norskar and Kadrill. Can they set up some of these longer range engage, this catch potential out of Schalke? Because that was an awkward passage of play here where Upset finally manages to get a little bit of farm in the bottom lane, but now has to drag. Uh, you know, defensively move away from his towers. Mysterious Monkeys are going to look for the play here. It's an awkward moment where Schalke are trying to defend this tower, but they don't know whether they can actually commit to it. It will be a three versus three on the bottom side. As amazing is starting to come in. Upset does have both of his summoners available and they have the lantern. But I don't know whether they want to go aggressive here because there's no real gain to be had in that 3v3 for now. Against the Fisher, against the Glacial Prison, it is a death sentence if you are caught by either of those. I didn't mean that pun. Oh, you did, it you happened. did. It yeah. happened. Because the CC chain is just so devastating. Yuki tops, uh, tops it off with a feather caller as well. And then you've got Koskyu with the seismic shove and you've got Kickers with the cataclysm. And if you get caught out at all as a member of Shalkin on Fear, you might as well wave goodbye to your life. A great hook onto the back line. Here comes the Weaver's Wall as Mysterious Monkey's got to take the fight. No scare and not back. Amazing with the kill. Kick Kickers is going to teleport in. He's going to jump onto Upset if he can. The flash, the heal are available. The jump away from Upset. Kickers doesn't go any further. Smitty J did not have TP to join the fight. And Kickers was looking to try and time the ultimate with the jump away. You can drag Tristana back at that point. Didn't quite get the timing, but still got enough from that. Got upset low health enough to back away and they get the tower. This, that wasn't an overcommit out of Mysterious Monkeys at all. They now have got the objectives and have turned around a game that looked very dire from that Jax getting ahead in the top lane. It will still be a sticking point 
for Schalke. But the first turret has gone in favor of Mysterious Monkeys. And it all came from Noskaren looking for the play. He hooks Yuki and feels like this is the right time to go because there's no TP out at the initial play from Kikis. And look at how far Smitty J had already crossed down. There was no threat on top side. So Mysterious Monkeys go, okay, let's just go for this fight. We can actually take this advantage. And they end up picking up the tower plus the kills. Shalka no fear will be able to get themselves a Rift Herald in response. No one went for the Cloud Drake as well. One of the less desirable tricks early on. Koski and Amazing will join this fight, and Smitty J is going to get forced back. He pops down the Counter Strike, looking for the leap across the wall, instead uses the Flash. Momento chased off by Kikis, the Cataclysm dodged, but he's still going to go down at the end of this as Kikis gets his second kill of the game. This game has gone very crazy in favor of Mysterious Monkeys very quickly. They found these fights. This is what the composition wanted to do with the Java, and you basically have free engage potential with between the Talia, the Javan, the Sejuani. You just run up to somebody if they're on their own and say, okay, now you face four ultimates and you're gonna end up dying. That's what's happened twice in a row now. The first one was set up by Norskaren looking for a play on himself, which is still kind of what we wanted to see Schalke be doing, trying to find out a pick on Yuki, but he didn't have the damage to follow it up. I really like this zone control composition as well coming out from the Mysterious Monkeys. It feels to me very much like this is the sort of composition that they play a lot better with. When you've got the Talia to lock out a backline, when you've got the long-range engage from a Sejuani, from a Glacial Fisher, when you can really shut down entire portions of a lane, that's when Mysterious Monkeys seem to thrive. And it's working for them here. Amazing as well, putting pressure in other lanes than top saying, okay, let's get a different lane ahead for a little bit, has really helped them accelerate a 2,000 gold lead at the 15-minute mark. Yeah, it has. And, and when we're talking about the play styles here and the one Mysterious Monkeys are playing now, it is easier to play an aggressive, engage-focused composition when you're not faced with heavy disengage than it is to play a pick composition with a split-push threat. It's wildly more easy for Mysterious Monkeys to just go, okay, I see a guy, I'm gonna go engage on him, catch him, okay, he's dead, okay, now we look for an objective. The difficulty is Schalke with the Rift Herald will see whether they can actually make a play here, but the Divas Wall comes out, Rift Herald's gonna kind of just zone, oh, what do you call it? Uh, face. Face, thank you, that was actually the word that I was looking for, through the wall. That's I'm a, glad that's you watched a lot of... It just uh, goes to the void, yeah. and then comes out of the void, through walls. It's like Cassidy. Yeah, very much so. Um, you've been watching a lot of Doctor Who. That's what I'm picking yes, up from this. Yes, I do um, enjoy watching Doctor Who from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> Have to keep up with how fellow doctors are doing. Shalkin up there <laughs> on the back foot a little bit as that Rift Herald didn't really get them too much. Smitty J jumped on though as Kicker tries to take the 1v1. Ooh, Smitty wins that's this. Not he wants. wins this so well. Glacial Prison comes out from Amazing, but it does not connect. That was... Over-aggression from Kikis and appropriate aggression from Smitty J. Yeah, appropriate aggression completely. Smitty J's like, uh, oh, you want to trade against me? Great, okay, I know I win this trade, so let's let's dance at this point. Trinity Force was completed, and that's Smitty J's comfort on this champion. He's played it for so long in so many matchups that I expect him to read trades well. And he has done that so far. Very well able to trade against that job, and, and it's worked out well. I don't even really think Amazing wants this trade. He is low mana, but the reason he's taking it is because he was on the way. So is Momento, okay, but he the gets stun, the stun. onto yeah. Smitty J. He can jump away. Momento's actually going to turn back onto Koski, who cleanses straight away, jumps up with the repel. Momento's dead now. Smitty J trying to retreat. And meanwhile, Kajal's on a flank position here won't be able to get any damage down on towards the back line and not really worth committing more people to defend smitty j he is already out at this point memento just sacrifices his life team player memento uh just denies the follow-on from smitty j there's a blue buff coming up relatively soon here stress and this is where we saw Ooh. mysterious monkey take the advantage coscu on this talia in game two and in this game Seismic shoves have been on point, and his zone control is absolutely perfect. Yeah, it's it's great. And Koskyu, we were talking about him. Like, is he now the gatekeeper for challenger mids wanting to get to LCS? Like he got denied quite a few times. Seems to be the case. And while Koskyu didn't look as impressive in, in LCS because of perhaps the competition he was facing, he has fed well against Cable. Some difficult matchups. You look to the last game, the Lucian kept him under tower quite heavily, but this game has been a lot better. Memento basically says, I don't think I'm getting out of here alive, so I'll just try and commit, try and get Smitty J out of there. 
And then the exchange, Smitty J just manages to run a, a run away. It's one of those, like, if Koscu wasn't there, they can kill Amazing with the two-man squad. But because yeah. Koscu joins, Memento realizes he's pushed a little bit yep. too far. Can't get away. Still, split push threat from Smitty J. Very evident with that play. He's now picked up a Bilgewater cut. So let's run down the items here. Stress. Static Shiv completed onto Upset. Essence Reaver for Yuki. Not a Yumu's Ghostblade, as other people <laughs> would call it. And a Banshee's Veil onto Coz We are starting to see these teams come on the line a little bit more. Yeah, of course, that Banshee's Veil, uh, an item we do see picked up sometimes against that uh, Syndra. It is a little bit more of a defensive item and going any kind of route where you're going full AP, but it's still fine. Look, Smitty J just knows how these trades go. Memento misses the Flash Cocoon, but Kikis jumps back in with the Cataclysm. Koskyu's on his way. Smitty will leap out of the rock pit. Doesn't want to play in that one at the moment. Smitty trying to turn back onto Koskyu, but the rest of the Mysterious Monkeys are here. Smitty with a counter-strike. Upset jumps across the wall. Unbreakable can jump away from Memento. Oh. Smitty eventually falls as he tried to sneak behind the Mysterious Monkeys' back line. All the while, Yuki has been pushing the top side as well. So Shalka, commit to the bottom side, commit to the kill, get it, but end up too low from that exchange. And Mysterious Monkey is able to capitalize on a couple of kills on the bottom side. Now, 3, 2, and 1 on this Jax. It's going to get more and more difficult for MM to commit to a play like that. That's what Shalka can use to break open this game. But if these towers fall, wow, Noscara knows they're going aggressive on this play. Kikis has the TP. Double the stun. Comes out. Blade Caller brings it back. Upset onto Yuki now. Here comes Amazing. The great hook onto Dreams, actually. And now Amazing's going to join the fight. Upset kills Yuki. A kill onto Kajal in response. Now Shalka trying to get the re-engage. Memento there. Smitty J with the TP. A great hook once again from Noscara. And three kills for Schalke. Schalke set up the play very aggressively to start, and they're able to punish Yuki, Amazing, and Dreams from being around. It's not likely to result in the Baron. You can see Mysterious Monkey's actually trying to catch a low health target as they come through the bush. Kikis and Kozku have kill threat on anyone like Upset that walks through. But look, Noscaren's low as well. Oh, poor support mains. This happens so often. You go to put a ward down in your met with a rock to the face. Upset's like, no, leave me. <laughs> Noscaren says, you shall not pass. Has to yell out. But look, this was the attempt onto Yuki initially. Good double stun off the, uh, the Feather Storm from Yuki, but he actually walks right into Upset. The bomb that's on him ends up ticking down, and they know they've killed Yuki already at this point. And Schalke are able to reset the fight, get themselves working again. Hook lands onto Amazing, keeps him in place in order for Schalke to be able to take this defensive play. And it looked to have been good for Mysterious Monkeys on the push from Yuki, but look, this buys so much more time for Schalke now. Now they can even push on that bottom lane, but Mysterious Monkeys, we saw this play against Mysterious Monkeys in game number two, and it backfired horribly for Schalke. Will the same thing happen in reverse? Koskyu has learned from his fellow challenger promotion tournament, Compadres. He is Lord of the Pit as he puts down the wall. Oh, and it's 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 a steal from Memento once again! Oh, what is this series? Can That's people, the third Baron steal we've had, Stress. Can people stop going Baron at like 22 minutes when you haven't opened up enough of an advantage? So, uh, Jax with a Baron uh, is going to push everything down. I don't understand it. Koski was Lord of the Pit. He set up the wall. He said, you shall not pass. And Memento just jumps straight over it. Yeah, Memento is, is cracks in the wall. Spider just climbs through it's and true. everything is okay. Um, really, though, last game ended with Mysterious Monkeys trying a Baron Rush against the Jax, who was taking the base the other side of the map. This time, Mysterious Monkeys try a Baron Rush against the Jax, who was pushing out for pressure on the bottom side, who comes up to the fight, Memento steals it away, and now has a Baron buff and can just continue to push any kind of lane he wants. I wonder whether that Baron call is going to be the difference between Schalke taking it 3-1 and one now or having another even series. Got to commend Schalke being able to steal it away again. And they've equalized the gold as well. 2,000 behind for the vast majority of this game. But now with this tower, they'll actually go ahead by about 1,000 gold or so. Alongside that, it, we talked so much about Smitty J being ahead, but now you look at the other matchups and they're getting ahead as well. Yep. Upset has now got Trinity Force and a Static Shiv. You've almost got a what, Morello and a second completed item for Cadrill as well. Now, Koski is still doing a decent job in the matchup. Up heavily in CS, three kills, four assists to his name. Banshee's first does reduce his damage 
damage a little bit, but is very standard. There's nothing wrong with that at all, especially when you're trying to block some of that uh, combo potential out of the likes of uh, the Syndra. Of course, you're up against a pick comp, so if you can block a hook, block a cocoon, that kind of thing, it all goes well. But look now, Koscu in the mid lane, they engage. A lock up straight onto Memento. That's a killing speed for Kickers. No Scaven in the pit with the rest of Mysterious Monkeys. He's going to get locked up as well. Two kills once again for the Mysterious Monkeys because they know Smitty J is not there. Same as game three here for Mysterious Monkeys. Up against it, they start the engages on the Baron buffed up team and they're able to push forward. Now, Smitty J will get objectives from this. He will push the bottom side and continue to advance the lead for Schalke. Kikis knows he can't trade with him. That is why Koskyu is here as well, but Koskyu has no ultimate. They know it was just used. Koskyu also has no flash. Smitty J is trying to work his way through the jungle. Guerrilla warfare here from him as he will manage to escape, get himself up towards the mid lane. Both these teams fighting for a spot in the LCS. Schalke closer to it at the moment, being 2-1 up in this series, but you need to win two series across the promotion tournament to secure your spot. Well, this would be a way that MM could get back into it. Of course, no teleport was available for Smitty J on this exchange, and we've talked a couple of times about how MM, when they have this engaged focus, when Amazing is able to dictate the pace, go aggressive, Kikis can come in, jump onto somebody, they can actually make these fights work for themselves. The problem is Schalke, Still maintain a slight, yes, uh, a slight gold lead at this point. It's not quite as detrimental as in the last game in favor of Schalke, but still, Schalke have the tools to close this series out. It was a 3k gold lead at the 20-minute mark in the last game. Ended up being about 6k at the 25-minute mark. Only about 700 here, stress. So a vast chasm between those gold advantages. And remember what we were talking about with the Jax, vision control, the ability to control any entrances on that path to bottom lane, and Smitty J did not have it. Now he finds himself collapsed upon, but the counter response comes from Schalke being able to push through the mid lane. Smitty J is sat between the lanes, actually jumps right into Kickers, but that's a trade if it's 1v1 he wants, but not with Yuki. Yuki is able to help Kickers get the kill. Kickers actually on a rampage now. I think he has six kills yeah, he across does. the course of this match. Behind in CS, but getting those kills is allowing him to collapse onto these Schalke members. Smitty J was in an awkward position there, and it was an easy collapse out of Mysterious Monkeys, knowing they can just take him down, because he didn't have enough vision control through the, the jungle. He was trying to find a safe path out. Now ups him, I And gets him out. Amazing is there on the front line. Here comes the Weavers. What oh, a great play. Glacial Prism on towards Upset, and Mysterious Monkeys have turned this one straight around. We can't talk about Smitty J in the split push, but Mysterious Monkeys are able to pull the trigger and take down Upset. And it's all gone a little bit shaky for Schalke as this game has expanded. The kill is going in favor of Mysterious Monkeys. But the Jax should be taking over this game, but the forced fights out of MM is what is keeping them in control. And look, Baron has expired. Baron will be up in a couple of minutes now in favor of, well, for whichever team they want, but you look at the way MM, if they can get that same engage again, that would set up a Baron play, potentially. I think you need to look at Koscu yeah. as well. He has been so on point with this Talia play. Probably the best I've seen him play across the course of this split. And we talked about whether it's he's facing Challenger Series opponents or LCS opponents, or whether perhaps it's that he is stepping up when his team needs him the most as well, because he hasn't had too much help from his team in this game. He didn't have too much help from his team in game two as well, when he was so strong on this Talia. And we are seeing him show why he got to LCS in the first place. Yeah, only recently have there really been those fights in mid lane that he has been involved in. Everything else he's kind of worked for himself, whether it was the Weaver's Wall coming through. I agree with you. This Cos-Q is better than we have seen all split. We've seen a handful of games, but we haven't really seen in the series Cos-Q actually shine in his own right quite up to this level. I like watching the Talia play out of him. I feel like this game, Cadrill has been up against a lot of presence from Cos-Q in the lane. The push power of the Talia into the Syndra has been difficult for him to deal with, which is the opposite of the last game. I wonder what Game 5 potentially would have in store for a mid lane matchup, but Schalke don't want to let that happen. Amazing has been caught out down to half. Smitty J is on the front line, but he's going to get locked he's up as well. Fine. They kill Amazing, and Smitty J gets out. Schalke no fear, able to get him out from the back lines, and 
That is the sort of ninja play they need to use to beat out the Mysterious Monkeys. The Cataclysm onto Kedro. He flashes the wall. The kill onto Nosuke and Koski unstoppable. And perhaps the Mysterious Monkeys have found an avenue back into this game. 20 seconds on the Baron and Mysterious Monkeys are trying to look to push forward. Now Schalke, they're fortunate they got upset out of there. They managed to get Smitty J out as well using the Lantern. MM aren't committing to a Baron. They're recalling out to make sure they're healthy enough. I kind of agree on this because of how shaky the Barons have been completely. Like, Memento stolen one, Amazing stolen two. Don't 50-50 it. Now, of course, Norskaren was dead from this fight. And it all started... I want to see where Smitty J comes from. He walks up through the bottom side looking to teamfight, but does take so much damage from Koski and Yuki. Even Koski defending on any kind of uh, exit path by using that shove um, to try and block a Jax that's trying to get away. But look, the rest of the fight comes through. They commit in, get the kill on Cadrill, but in the picture in picture, bottom left hand side of his screen is the most important thing. Memento, don't think he can get there in time. Koskyu's gonna throw him away. Oh, from Koskyu. He's gonna jump across the wall, perhaps even die here, but the TP comes in. Memento tried to jump in. There's the lantern to get him out now. Smitty J is gonna be in a world of hurt. There's no oh. ward for him to jump to. He goes down into the GA, and Mysterious Monkey's gonna jump the wall as Cadrill gets taken out by Koskyu. Smitty J, though, is back alive and can do work. He kills Dreams, he kills two. He's looking for more. So much damage from Hose. He's gonna jump oh, straight up to the face of Yuku and then flash across the wall. He got the kill. gets another. And it's, oh, he dies at the end. It's an ace in favor of the Mysterious Monkeys as Schalke tried desperately to defend. And it's almost poetic that Kick is an amazing are the only two people remaining for Mysterious Monkeys at this point. But it has not only been about them. Koski's damage in fights, Yuki's damage in fights has been enough for Mysterious Monkeys to march through the Schalke lineup. And on that one, that was a very close fight. Smitty J being able to deal with most of the members of Mysterious Monkeys in that fight. But Baron Buff went over to MM. They will have that advantage and looks to continue to make their way back into the game. So Koskyu tries to block Memento as much as he can. Uses a Blast Cone early, but that actually lets Memento get into position to repel up. Luckily, Mysterious Monkeys get the Baron low enough so they can take it out. In comes the rest of the fight. Smitty J had TP'd in. GA Prox, he jumps out of the back of the fight, gets onto Koskyu, takes out one damage sealer, takes down Dreams. He's not taking too much damage until Yuki sets his sights on him and at the end of this, where is the damage that comes from? It looked like oh, it's Krugs. And it's, Krugs it's end up getting and it. And an auto from yep. Krugs. Oh. So, <laughs> exactly. The, the red buff, the auto from Krugs is enough to just take down Upset as he tried to leap away. He kills them in response to yeah. He says, oh, you killed me. I'll take you down. <laughs> the jungle is on the side of the mysterious monkey. It makes sense they've lived in the EU zoo for the last 10 weeks. And now they are looking to live in this bottom lane as they push up with all five members. They, are, they want to equalize this series. Getting a win this week is so vital to your chances of getting through to the LCS once again. And from what was a 700 gold lead, remember, for Schalke at that 25 minute mark, now Mysterious Monkeys have themselves the Baron buff. They have the team fighting team. They want to jump aggressively into the base of Schalke and try and even this series back up. Schalke looked like they were in such a great position. But MM off a of Baron call, one that went their way. They are looking to establish full control on the end of game four. Schalke 04 will be reminiscent of playoffs just four months ago. It was this lineup with one or two replacements that took them down in the playoffs that stopped them from making their way straight back into the LCS after being relegated. It was this lineup that destroyed them 3 1, and it was Koskyu and Yuki who were a main stay of that destruction. And once again, we see Koskyu stepping up against his former foes and showing them that he is the gatekeeper. He is the one who knocks on the door and sees if you are ready to make it to the LCS. Yeah. NA had Fabi. <laughs> EU has Koskyu. A little bit different. Not necessarily about challenger on the ladder, but certainly Koskyu has stepped up in this series. Yuki, I think, and Dreams have quietly had a, a, a good series themselves. I don't feel like any player and of either of the lineups has underperformed in this series consistently. I think each, there have been games where you look at, oh, maybe this mid lane matchup didn't go in favor of a cos queue, where Cadrill on the Lucian is able to have his emphasis. But then equally, this matchup is the opposite, where we see the opposite player taking effect. And we came into today saying we didn't know 
what to expect on the strength of each team, and I think that has shone through. Schalke and Mysterious Monkeys very evenly matched here, but Mysterious Monkeys look like they're in a position to close out game four and take us to one game to separate a winner's bracket team and a loser's bracket team. Once more into the breach go the Mysterious Monkeys. Schalke and World Fear will defend. Only lost that bottom inhib at the moment. Let's quickly review the items before yep. this fight starts. Four items in the top lane. Kick is now going towards the GA, but the fight is going to begin and they don't want us to look at anything but this top lane inhibitor tower. There's still minions there if Mysterious Monkeys want to push in. An upset is going to be one of the key factors here if he can stay safe in the fights. If he doesn't get caught by a Cosq, a Yukio, or a Kikis, he will be able to take a step back on Tristana and use full advantage of this additional range. He's at level 16, not quite at that max range cap for Tristana at this point, but still will be able to sit far enough back, but he cannot get engaged upon. He can't get hit by an ultimate from Sejuani. He has a QSS, there's a Mikhail's on Norskeren as well. But is it enough for Schalke to hang on? Remember, a win here puts Schalke through to the winner's bracket next week. A loss here takes us to a game five. No armor penetration for upset yet either. No last whisper on him. Smitty J is pretty beefy on his items as well. But Four the bottom completed. Lane. The bottom lane pushing in. Smitty J has to commit to that. Remember, Jack's not as great a team fighter. This is one of the reasons why we still see the Javan picked into the Jacks despite having a quote unquote bad matchup. G2 did this for Expect a couple of weeks back in the LCS and said, okay, we don't care about the matchup. We're just going to engage and MM step up. They're taking a little damage under the tower here. Schalke holding on this push. It'll be on the next minion wave. And remember, Baron Buff is expired one minute until it respawns. So this is more about presence to be able to retreat back and get the Baron again for Mysterious Monkeys. A lot of this next fight is about Kadrill and Upset and whether they can respond to the Mysterious Monkeys pressure. Upset has shown his positioning is very strong. Kadrill's done the same, but Kadrill's had a poor game thus far. Cocoon lands onto Koskyu, the knockback. Amazing jumps onto Kadrill, won't get the stun, but the inhibitor tower does fall. Smitty J wants the engage, oh, the counter strike on four. The hook onto Dreams, the knockback with the scatter of the week, and this is the game-defining play. Smitty J into the GA. Koskyu still at the back line, somehow survives. Kickis kills Momentum. Smitty J in the midst can't do anything and Mysterious Monkeys are surviving! Mysterious Monkeys are surviving in this series, in this game. They'll take the inhibitors and they are surviving in the LCS for now. This will be the game and this will take us to a game five. It looked like upset maybe from the distance could have got the damage, but you mentioned it. He doesn't have the armor penetration right now. He can't hold on alone. It was a good setup to the fight from Smitty J. He got the four-man stun, but it wasn't enough. We are going to game five between Mysterious Monkeys and Schalke and Ulfir. What a game to round it out. Four games in and nothing between these two teams. Schalke and Ulfir unable to close out with an early lead in the top lane and Mysterious Monkeys bite back in game four. That looked like a very dangerous game where Schalke looked to be in control even off the first Baron. Memento gets in there, gets the steal. It looked like Schalke with the Jacks were going to take over and suddenly Mysterious Monkeys go, okay, no, we're going to fight. We're going to take as many fights as we can. Use this composition as it is meant to be. The Javan, the Sejuani, continuing to march forward and fight after fight goes in their favor enough to turn the game back around and 37 minutes in, they finally turn a fight that it looked like Schalke had won and end up closing the game. We are so close to seeing who gets through to that winner's bracket and I think you have to step into the minds of NIP and of Giants now and say you're looking obviously at your series tomorrow, you're looking at that first series in the promotion tournament, but looking at these two teams, do you think anyone's worried? Do you think anyone thinks that these teams aren't beatable? Because neither of them has shown the dominance that we, we saw in, this, in the summer's promotion tournament. Neither of them have destroyed their opposition like we saw Origin and Giants get destroyed. Right, but I, I think that that is more that they're actually on a, a decent level between both teams, where I think NIP uh, and Giants will be on a similar level. I am excited to see how the rest of the matchups go, but we still have one more game in this. And you saw the look on Cadrill's face backstage. I think Cadrill in the next game is going to say, okay, just give me a matchup I can use. Give me a matchup I can win and dominate with. Because Syndra is fine into Talia, but if I get pushed in, 
all the time in the laning phase. I want to get out of this laning phase and start killing people. And I think that is one thing that I look for Schalke to actually adapt. And do you change the ban phase then? Because Talia has been the only champion we've seen Koscu really yeah. perform on. Do you ban out the Talia? Do you, do you mitigate one of those other bans? I think you phase two Talia ban at this point. Um, I, I think that the bans have been good, focused towards the top side, but I'm less scared of the likes of a Renekton or a Shen. More so the Shen, I think, could be let through for Kikis than I am of the Talia. The Talia, to me, right now, is looking too safe for Q to be able to play this matchup out. So that's my opinion on it. But of course, Schalke have their own game plan here. We'll see whether they adapt on that in this next game. That we will. Veteran, obviously, uh, the coach for Schalke used to be with H2K, will be very used to these tense situations and will know how they want to approach the next game of the series. But amazing. And the rest of the Mysterious Monkeys are very used to tense series as well, having been in the LCS for the last 10 weeks. We're going to have a quick look back at that final fight because at times it looked like Schalke had the engage they wanted. Yeah, especially when Smitty J jumps in, flashes onto four people and even gets Q, forces Yuki to QSS out and here it looks good, but look, Upset is stuck hitting Kikis for a while. Kikis still high enough, it means Upset has to kite back. Dreams blocks a lot of damage through the, I believe it's a locket, the unbreakable Dream survives. Upset has to kite down. Look, Kikis would have provided a great reset. Q would have provided a great reset and he does but it's way too late in the fight here as upset actually got the kill and that means mm could move in to take the base and that fight was one of those ones where Schalke if a couple of different things had gone their way they could have won but mysterious monkeys at that point were too far ahead and were able to just survive through by dreams putting up this massive shield and credit has to go to Kikis as well because yeah. he was devastated in the lane. He got absolutely dominated by yeah. Smitty J and then ended up 8-3-11, just somehow picking up kill after kill in the bot lane fights. And that's the thing is this ja Javan versus Jax matchup, it's something G2 spoke to a couple of weeks ago. I touched on it in a game where you can have a bad lane matchup and then say, okay, but this pick will still give us this advantage in fights which is something Jax can't do as well. You saw the effect that a Jax could have in a fight by getting a four-person stun, whereas Javan just goes, okay, Cataclysm time, jumps in, is able to just get a lot of activity when it came to Mysterious Monkeys trying to get back into the game against Schalke. Well, Mysterious Monkeys had their backs against the wall, but managed to force a game five. We'll be back for the decider in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. I think we can win. <laughs> 